So last week, Apple announced that they officially have 2 billion active iPhones worldwide. That means there's 2 billion users, 2 billion people on their iPhone, and 2 billion people that have Safari pre-built into their iPhone as their main and primary source of web browsing. Now, I'm one of those people that uses Safari a lot, and it's kind of my main application that I would say I use. And you'd be surprised how many people use Safari as their most used applications. Go into your settings and see exactly how much time is spent in Safari overall. I'm curious to know. But in this video, what I want to talk about is 10 things that you probably didn't know Safari could do to kind of help with your Safari experience overall and to make things just that much easier. So without further ado, let's talk about these 10 Safari features that you wish you already knew. Let's get into it. Okay everyone, let's get right into this video. And I am using a 13 Pro Max here, but everything will be the same for not only your iPhone 14 and 14 Pro Max, but also these will be relatively the same for your iPad as well, because these are in the Safari settings and in Safari itself. The first one is the only one that is not applied to the iPad, but it is the new address bar. So if we go into our settings and then go down to Safari, this is where we're gonna live, so get used to this little section of the settings menu. And then you can see this new tab section. So in iOS 16, Apple actually made this tab bar feature, the default view of actually being able to use the URL bar in Safari. I personally hated this. Now some people do like it, so by default it is there, and it makes it easy to swipe in between actual pages that you're on because all the tabs are put down there. But me, for instance, I like to keep it where the single tab is and have the actual address bar over here on the top. So that is the way I like it, but depending on which way you like to have your address bar, go into the settings and manually change it that way. I like to keep it on the top like I said, but that is one way to actually change it. Feature number two is actually adding to the home screen. So you're actually able to add any home page or URL to your home screen. And some of them actually do it a little bit better than others. So for instance, I'm on here on nine to five. You can see I'm reading an actual article, which is nice. But if I go into the share tab down here and scroll down to where it says add to home screen, you can have an add to home screen, name it whatever you want. It says nine to five Mac. And then you can see that there is an icon there on my home screen for the nine to five Mac page. What I think is really cool is that it's somewhat optimized for it to be viewed this way. So you can see that on the icon, it looks really good. Like there's nothing that needs to be edited about the icon. And secondly, some websites actually, when you tap into the actual home screen shortcut, remove the address bar totally, which is very cool. I remember I used to do this with Chime Bank because they didn't have an iPad app and I wanted an iPad specific app. So what I did was I just did the same exact thing. I added it to the home screen and then I had this new view of actual nine to five Mac or Chime in that instance on the iPad. But you can see that it's still fully navigable. Like you still have the URL up there a little bit, but for the most part, they remove it to give you somewhat of an app experience, which I love. And then you just press done, you scroll out and you can see nine to five Mac is there as a, it's not really an app, but it is a shortcut to a web page inside of Safari. Now this next one is inside of Safari. So go into regular Safari, go into your tab section here, and you can see that I have 42 tabs open. And just so you guys are aware, some people like to know what the limit is or how many tabs you can have. And it is 500 tabs in Safari as of iOS 16. I'm not somebody that gets to that many tabs, but even 42 is a lot. But what you can do actually, if you're still using your tabs and you wanna search your tabs, you can actually scroll all the way up and then the search bar comes up here. And if it, let's say I wanna search points because I'm looking for the point.me website, it's right here, we click on there and then it's easy to find whatever tab you're looking for, especially if you're somebody that has hundreds of tabs open at the same time, just to kind of save something, for instance, but you wanna go back and find it, you can now do that with the search bar inside of the tab section. Feature number four is again, let's go back into the tabs, let's scroll down to any one of these tabs, and if you long press on a tab, you get a bunch of different options here. So you can actually copy it, you can add bookmarks for 42 tabs, you can pin the tab, which we'll touch on in a second, you can move the group, and it has a little drop down menu there, you can rearrange all the tabs, you can arrange the tabs by title, or arranged by website, arranged tabs by website. You can close the tabs and then you can close other tabs as well. So this is the way that I like to actually close my tabs. So in order to close all your tabs, you just click on that button right there, but I will show you another way in a second. But to close your tabs, long press on one tab, then you can close them all, or you can close each individual one right there as well. And then another way to get rid of them is actually swiping to the left for those tabs. So if you swipe, you can't swipe up, you can't swipe down, you can't swipe right, but if you swipe left, you actually delete those tabs as well, which is another way to actually delete tabs overall. Now this next one is actually also a way to close all the tabs, but it gives you a few other options. But if you long press on this right here, you actually can close all 36 tabs at once and then it brings up the home tab, which I'll show in a second. But this is also a way to open up a private tab. So if you open up a private tab, it lets you know Safari so won't remember the pages you visited, your search history, or your autofill information after you close the tab in private browsing mode. Some reasons why you wanna do the private mode would be just to make sure that your information isn't taken, or let's say you're inside of a public Wi-Fi and you kinda of just wanna search something very quickly. That's the reason to do it, and you can tell because it does black out the address bar and give this kind of like dark gray hue, as well as this private browsing mode right here. And then when you open up the tabs, you only get your private tabs right here. And then if you X that out, get out of private, go to your regular tabs, and then you're there with all of your regular tabs. 
and that is how you open up a private tab. Another way to do it is to drop down this menu right here and click on private and then you're in the private tab section. So another way to organize all your tabs is if you long press on one of your actual tabs that are open, you actually pin that tab and then it'll be at the top. So now you can see that at the top, it is in this new pinned version and it is much smaller. So you can open that up and then it opens up that entire page. So if you are somebody who likes to pin a couple tabs or make sure you're in situations where you have those tabs saved and you wanna save that for a later, later date, you can do that by pinning the tab very easily. And then this is what it looks like with two pin tabs. And then just so you are aware, let's say you do have some pin tabs and you wanna close out all the tabs. If you long press on here and say close other tabs, it'll close everything besides the pin tabs. So if you close all of the tabs, you can see that my pin tabs are still there. We'll X out of that right there and it'll take you to your start page. Now the next one, let's go back into the settings here. Let's go into your Safari settings. So we are in general, then we go to Safari. And if you wanna have a situation similar to iMessage, so for instance with iMessage, if you wanna delete old conversations chronologically or based on time criteria, you can actually do that where in messages you can delete by 30 days, a year or two years. Here is relatively the same thing. So if you go down to your tab section where it says close tabs, you can have a section here. So after one month, all the tabs that are there that are older than one month get automatically deleted. So if you're somebody that just wants to make sure you have enough space or enough tabs that you can still open after let's say a month, a week or a day, then you can do that as well. So it'll automatically delete tabs without you having to do anything. So this next one, a lot of people don't know about. As you can see, I have a actual custom wallpaper in my Safari homepage. So this Safari homepage is a fresh page. So if I go down here, let's say I wanna add a new tab. This is what opens up whenever you add a new tab to give you a jumping off point. So you have your favorites, your frequently visited, things that are shared with you via iMessage mostly, some privacy reports, series suggestions, reading lists, and different tabs. And then you have this edit button down here. So if you tap on that edit button, you have a bunch of different customization options. So if we go into the edit, you can actually move around exactly what's here. So if you want your privacy report to be first, well, X out of that, you scroll all the way up, you can see that your privacy report is now showing first, which is great to see. And then if you press edit again, I like to move that down to where it was, favorites and keep that the way it was, but then you can also change your background. So it does have some custom backgrounds here that you can just choose from that Apple gives you. So you can see I have this like cool bird looking thing, but if I actually wanna do my own picture, I can just press this plus button and do this. And now all of a sudden you see that you have a custom wallpaper for Safari. Now it's more of an aesthetic thing, but I think it's very cool to kind of make Safari a little bit more customizable instead of making it so cut and dry. So this next one is for those people that use the reader mode. So reader mode is when you tap on this double A right here and then go show reader, it just gives you a nicer canvas to actually read whatever you're reading, right? And inside of that reader mode, just to give you guys some ideas, you can change the background a little bit, make it dark mode, gray, kind of this like beige color to help with light, and then obviously the light mode. But this is just a way to easily read whatever content you're trying to read at the same time without getting distracted by let's say ads or things like that, which is great to see. And then to get out of it, you just tap on here, hide the reader mode, and then you're back into the normal website way of viewing this actual article, for instance. But let's say you have some certain websites where you know for a fact you're gonna wanna be in reader mode all the time. So in order to do that, so let's say I wanna do that with nine to five Mac, we'll tap on this double A here, we'll go to show reader, we'll tap on the double A again, and then go to website settings. When you go into website settings, you can request desktop website, use reader automatically, and use content blockers automatically, which is great to see. So if I do this right here, every single time I go to 9to5mac.com, it's gonna show up in reader mode, and if I wanna disable that again, and just make it a manual process, press done there, and now manually, every time I go there, I can actually just turn reader mode on, which is great, whenever you are reading just articles in general or just reading something as opposed to watching content or just scrolling through. And then the very last thing that I wanna mention is that not a lot of people know that Safari has extensions now. Now, yes, they're not as robust as Chrome extensions. Chrome extensions have been around for years now, and Apple is still a little hesitant on allowing third-party applications to go into this extensions kind of category, but there's a couple ways to A, get them, and then B, manage them. So if we go into settings, let's stay in the Safari section, you have a section here in general called extensions. So under extensions, you have a few things that show up. So you have the content blockers, which kind of sits in its own category. So I do have a content blocker called Kablock. And then you have some other extensions here that just have extensions by default. So you have card pointers, focus work, PayPal Honey, and Rakuten, right? And then you have another category on extensions on other devices. For instance, I have PIPifier on my iPad for some picture in picture stuff. But the only way that I've noticed how to access the extension store is to go into this more extensions button. Then you get sent to this other section of the app store where it's all about extensions, right? There's no tab to get to this extension kind of library directly from the app store. So the only way to get to extensions is if by chance the app that you downloaded has an extension kind of plugin or B to go into the settings and go through all these extensions. You can see that for the most part, it has the big ones. It's got Grammarly, it's got PayPal, it's got Honey. 
you know, it's got VPNs, Acorn Invest, you know, the passwords, and then obviously a lot of content blockers. And then once you download it, you go back into your extensions and let's say you want to turn on PayPal Honey, you just turn it on right there and you're good to go. And I'm going to show you guys how Kablock works. So for instance, let's go back into Safari. You can actually click on this double A and you can actually manage your extensions from here as well if you want to turn them on. But like you saw, Kablock is in its own category because it is a content blocker. So if I want to turn it off, so you can see that the ad blocker when it's turned off and you scroll through a normal website, you get an ad up here, you get an ad right here, which is kind of normal to see because that's how people get paid. But then if you go down here to the A and then turn on content blocker, the site will reload and then you can see that that ad is gone and so is this ad right here. So these are just ways that you can actually use extensions and ad blockers natively through Safari, which work extremely well. But those are my 10 most used features of Safari. Like I said, Safari has a lot going for it that people don't know about. And we're gonna have a deep dive with even more features on Safari, so stay subscribed, but let's finish up this video. And that is pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, Safari is a lot more robust than people think. It's not just a simple web browser. It's not a way to get into another situation like Googling something or finding out information. Safari itself is pretty powerful, right? My favorite two features that I would kind of put on there are one, the fact that you can finally use extensions. I know the extensions library isn't as robust as let's say the Chrome extension library, but even being able to have extensions built into your iPhone, your iPad, and obviously also Mac OS is a great thing to have. And it has some of the main ones, right? It has Honey, but the main thing it does have is an ad blocker, which is beautiful to see. And then secondly, just being able to manage all the different tabs in Safari is just a godsend, right? Being able to delete all of them because I open so many Safari tabs over and over and after two or three days I have over a hundred tabs open. But leave a comment down below if you learned something new. Did you guys already know all these features? Did you know Safari could do all these things already for you built in and it's all native? Leave a comment below what your favorite feature that I talked about was and leave a comment down below something new that you learned. And thirdly, leave a comment of maybe a feature that you use in Safari that I didn't mention and help some other viewers in the comments out with some maybe other tips and tricks that you use on a daily basis. But that's gonna do it for this video everybody. If you did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you guys want to watch some more Mac OS, iOS, or iPad OS videos, click on one of these right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. And definitely stay subscribed because we got more of these tips and tricks videos coming real soon. I'm out of here. Peace.